In this screen capture video, I'm going to introduce you to using data in Excel. First, we're going to talk about how to download data from the course website. If I go to the course website, tinyurl.com slash felsenstats, there's a data link here on the left-hand side. That data link takes you to most of the data we're going to use in this class, except for the data that you'll create or obtain on the internet. You can click on that or I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab to keep this website open. That link will take you to SkyDrive and SkyDrive again is a free online storage service from Microsoft that comes with your William Patterson email address. For this, I'm going to download the Forbes list of 100 top celebrities. You'll note there's a lot of different kinds of data sets on all kinds of things, ranging from, ranging from Rate My Professor to attitude surveys, political surveys, weather, sports. If I click on that checkbox there, and I can click Download to download this data set. Now once you've downloaded the data set, you should open it up. If there's any kind of message you get here about protected view, you want to enable that. Enable editing, otherwise you can't do anything with the data set. You also want to save the file on your desktop temporarily. And you want to save it with the number of the assignment that you're working on. In this case, it's going to be 02. You really need to make sure you save the data on the desktop or documents folder before doing anything. Otherwise, some key functions of Excel will not be available. Now, let's take a look at this data. We have data on 100 of the top celebrities, their name, rank, um, probably in terms of one of these other variables. We have the category of celebrity they are and their gender. and there's a hundred of them. Now note that each row is a case. That's what we call it, in this case, a celebrity or a person. And each column is a variable. Columns are indicated by letters and rows are indicated by numbers. And at the very top row is called the header row. We have the variable name right here. Now one trick to go to the bottom of the data set without having to scroll down is to press, to click anywhere on the, da on the data set and then press control end. That takes you automatically to the bottom right hand corner. To go back up, you press control home and it takes you up to the leftmost, upper, uh, upper leftmost corner. If I go back to the bottom, control end, see that there are a hundred celebrities because Black Eyed Peas, the very last one listed here, is listed as in the 101st row and there are a hundred rows of celebrities with the very first row indicating the variable name. So again, we press Control and once to go to the bottom control home to go to the top. That's sometimes useful. Now, one important thing you should know is that Excel doesn't really know that these are data. In order to get Excel to recognize these set of data as data, we want to create what's called a data table. To do that is very simple. All you have to do is you have to make sure that all the data are arranged like this. There are no spaces or um, separations between them. Or you can simply highlight the entire thing. Um, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm simply going to click on any individual cell. The important thing is to click on any individual cell, not more than one cell. So you don't want to go like this or like this. When creating a data table, you just want to click on one cell and then press Control T. When you press Control T, so it will ask you whether you want to create a table. 
it will have this squiggly line. Um, it looks like it's moving around all of the data. Should surround the entire data set. And then you'll see in this box something that I should interpret for you. If we just ignore the dollar signs for a moment, we're going to get to those later in the course, then what you should see is you should see a series of addresses um, separated by a colon. Remember that each cell in the data matrix has an address. So the very upper leftmost cell is A1, and then A2, A3. In this case, this is A1, and then we have this colon, and we have J101. Note that A1 is the cell in the very upper leftmost corner. J101 is the cell in the lowermost right-hand corner. And the colon indicates through or to. So in other words, what this is just saying is we want to, it's creating a data table for all the data from A1 through to J101, meaning this entire um, data matrix here, which it indicated with that squiggly line that looks like it's moving. You also want to make sure that since we have variable names, this box is checked. My table has headers because they do have these variable names. That's important to make sure this is checked off. Then I press OK. Now, Excel indicates that this is data by changing the color and giving it this um, particular color scheme. You can change the color scheme, but it's better to have a color scheme to separate the data from the non-data outside here, or the empty space. And also, it put these little drop-down menus at the top of each variable. Those drop-down menus are for two things, sorting data and filtering data. So for example, now that the celebrities are already sorted from um, highest to, to least well paid, but if I wanted to sort from in the reverse direction, from smallest to largest, I can click on that drop down menu like that and reverse it. Or I can go back. I can do that with we can sort them by web rank, largest to smallest, like that. Sorting is very simple. The other thing to note is when, you, when you're in a data table, notice there's something, a menu called Table Tools at the top here. Now that menu goes away if I click over here, outside the data table. See, it went away. If I click anywhere inside the data table, that Table Tools comes back. At the leftmost corner here of that of that table tools menu is the name of the table. If the default is table one, you want to give the data table a more descriptive name. In this case, I'm going to call it celebs. Press enter, and now that's the, the name of this table. We're going to use pivot table in the future um, is this really powerful to, and very simple way to summarize a lot of data. But in this case, I want to show you how to reference this table now that we've named it. If you remember from the previous screen capture video, I talked about functions. Functions are things that you know, operate on, on data. You can get to a function by pressing equals in any cell. In this case, I'm going to use the average function, and I want to average the pay the celebrities make. I type in average. Excel actually gives you a little hint there. Then, after naming the function, you want open parenthesis. And now, what I want to do is get the average of this pay variable, and this pay variable is within the data set called celebrity, so if, or celebs rather. So I enter that name of the data table first. As I'm entering it, it helps me out and I can double click on it like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the average not just of the entire celebrities data set, that wouldn't make any sense. I want to get the average of pay. To access variables within data sets, after writing out the name of the, the data set itself, I enter this 
bracket, square bracket, and Excel immediately lists the names of these variables. Okay. I can double click on pay, and it shows up there. It's showing up right here, and it's also showing up in the function bar above. Then I want a close bracket, and then I can press clo I can enter close parenthesis or just press enter, and now Excel has calculated the average pay for these hundred celebrities, which is 47.18 million. I can do the same thing to get the sum. I type in equals the sum function. It doesn't have to be an uppercase. But I'm doing that here. Open parenthesis then refer to the data table, which is celebs. Open bracket, gives me the list of variables. Click on the one I want, double click on the one I want, then close bracket and enter. And now it gives me the sum of all of the pay, which is equal to 4,718 million or 4,718 million is the sum of all of what they're paid. So that's how you refer to data tables in formulas or functions. And you can see when I've done that, this formula stays up here on that formula bar. And it also is color coordinated with the blue up here and the blue line around it, highlighting the data that it's um, acting on. This is going to come in handy later as we do more and more interesting and complicated things.